back to our channel. I'm Teacher Cedric, and today we are going to go through the SMOPS revision daily practices from the module Calculation and Number Theory. Let us start with the first question. Now, a number n is greater than 1. When 290, 235, and 200 is divided by n, gives remainder a, a plus 2, a plus 5, respectively. What is n? Now, first of all, we see that I have three different remainders here, which make this question a bit complicated. So let us start with a simple example first. If I have 28, 33, 48, when divided by n, they all give remainder 3. But then the quotient here are different, which are unknown. How do we find out n? Well, the first equation is equivalent to if I have 28, it is equal to some amount of n plus 3. This 3 is where this remainder comes from. And the second equation is equivalent to 33 is some amount of n plus 3. This 3 is where this remainder comes from. Now, there will be much more n here than this n here. And the same applies to the third equation, 48 equals some amount of n, which is which would be greater than this part, plus 3. This is where this 3 comes from. Now, how do we find n? We can simply take 33 minus 28, because if I take 33 minus 28, on the right-hand side, this 3 and this 3 would cancel each other. And then this part of n and this part of n would cancel each other, so that I would only left with some amount of n. So I know 33 minus 28 is some amount of n. So this means that this difference is a multiple of n. And we can apply the same trick to the second equation and the third equation. If I take 48 minus 33, I will get also a multiple of n, as this 3 and this 3 would cancel each other, and the sum of the n's would cancel each other. Now, 33 minus 28, that's 5. So 5 is a multiple of n. And 48 minus 33, that's 15. So 15 is a multiple of n. So what is n? n could be 1 or 5. That's all this example. So we see that if I have some equations like this, where I have division, and then it all gives the same remainder, the trick is to take the equation, the second equation minus the first equation, to find out that the difference is a multiple of this value n. And then we can also perform the same trick to the other two equations to narrow down the possibilities. Now, this is how you will solve this type of question. Now, if we look at, at this original problem, I have 290, 235, and 200 divided by n gives different remainder. Now, if they are all a's, then it's just the case that we just saw. How do we get, up, get rid of this 2 and this 5 here? Well, I know that this 2 means that if I take 235 divided by n, it will remain a and another 2. So if I reduce this dividend here by 2, then the remainder will be just be a. And the same applies here. If I take away 5 from this 200, this remainder would also be less with 5. So I know 233, which is 235 minus 2, when divided by n, gives remainder a. And 195, which comes from 200 minus 5, when divided by n, gives remainder a. Now this is what we just saw. To find n, we simply take this, the first equation minus the second equation to get this. So we know 57 as a multiple of n. And we can use the second equation to minus the third equation to find out that 38 is a multiple of n. Now this means that n is a common factor of both 57 and 38. Now since 57 and 38 as the common factors of 1 and 19, but since n is greater than 1, so n can only be 19. And that's solved our first problem. Let us move on to the next question. If the sum of two numbers is 64 and their product can divide 4,875, what is the difference between the two numbers? 
Now, I have two numbers, A and B. The, the sum is 64. And I know that A times B, the products can divide 4,875. This means that A times B must be a factor of this number. And if this, if the products of A and B is a factor of 4,875, this means that A and B are both factors of 4,875. And since A plus B is 64, A and B should all, should both be smaller than 64. Now what's the next step? The next step was simply to be finding the factors of 4,875, which we know seven, oh sorry, 4,875 is three times five times five times five times 13. To find out the products, let us run out the first few factors of 4, 8, 7, 5, which could be 1, 3, 5, 13, 15, 25, 39, and then it goes on. But remember, A and B should both smaller than 64, so we should only look at 1 to 33, 39. This, how many? Seven numbers here. We don't have to look at the numbers that continues from here. Now, can you find two numbers from this part that the product, sorry, that the sum is 64. Well, we could, that is just 25 and 39. So 39 minus 25 is 64. The question is asking for the difference. So I take 39 minus 25, which gives 14. And that's the final answer to this problem. Let us look at our final question of the day. Now, given that A, A equals this, all these fractions add together, find the integer part of A. Now, remember from our previous lesson that in order to find the integer part of A, do I have to find out the exact value of A? No, we don't need. We simply need to find a range for A. We need to find a smaller value than A and a bigger value than A so that we know A will be somewhere in between. Now, if you want to learn more about this, make sure you check out our previous video on this lesson. Now, next, we can try to find a smaller value that is, uh, that is smaller than A, which could be, I turn all these fractions into one over 16, so it's smaller. And I can turn all these fractions all into one, so it's bigger than A. But then I'll find, hmm, A would be somewhere in between one and 16. Now that doesn't help in it. There are so many possibilities for A. So let us try to narrow down the range. Now, instead of turning all these fractions into one, I could turn all these fractions into one half, which would give me this. But then this is still not very helpful because there are still many possibilities for A. It could be two, could be four, could be seven. No. So, there is a more advanced method we can use. Instead of modif modifying all these fractions at once, we can cut them into parts, and then we tune the value up and down for each part respectively. But before that, it is worth remembering that if you see one half plus one third plus one sixth, that is just one. Now, this shows up in many questions, and it's worth remembering. And with that, we can rewrite this A as one plus one, one fourth, one fifth, one seven, and it goes on. Now, as I said, instead of trying to tune, modifying all these fractions at once, we can first cut them into half. And by cutting them into half, we should also try to simplify our calculation. What does it mean? For example, this one and one is already very easy to calculate, so we don't have to modify this part. So if I cut it here, now, where should I cut next? I have one fourth, one fifth, one seventh, one eighth. If I cut it here, it will make life much more easier to find out the maximum and the minimum of this part because I have four numbers here and I have one fourth and one eighth. So let's try to find out the maximum value of this part. How I can turn this, value, this part a little bit bigger. Well, I could turn all these fractions into one fourth to find that the maximum value of this part is one. 
and then the minimum value would correspond to the case where I turn all these three fractions into one eighth to get one over half. Now, what about the next part? Well, to find a maximum, I can turn all these eight numbers into one over nine to get eight over nine. And the minimum value is that to turn all these fractions into one over 16 to get one half. Now I find out a bigger value of this part and a smaller value of this part, bigger value of this part and a smaller value of this part. That should narrow down the range for A. And it is quite obvious to see that the minimum value of A is one plus one plus a half plus a half, which gives me three. And a slightly bigger value than A is one plus one plus one plus eight over nine, which gives me three and eight over nine. So now I know A will lies within this range. So what is the integer part of A? There will simply be just three. And that solves our final question. Well, the main takeaway of this question is that if you have much more complicated summation over here, such that you cannot modify all the fractions at once, you'll get a much larger range. You can try to first cut these fractions, all these fractions into different parts, and then you modify each part respectively instead of doing it all at once. Now that's it for today. If you want to learn more about RI or SMOPS exams, you can join our WeChat group for more contents, and this is the QR code. I'm Teacher Sadri, and I'll see you soon.